In addition to the programs that I've mentioned, some of which cover a large part of the region, we also carry out specific corporate social responsibility projects adapted to prevailing conditions in a specific countries such as the Dominican Republic. We are investing to guarantee that social progress in the communities we touch will become the center of successful and positive development for the country and its people. In particular, I'd like to make note of support for the involvement of the Canadian multinational corporation Barrett Gold in the Dominican Republic, a company of which I am a director that will invest US 4.6 billion there. We are currently working at full capacity and our corporate project is on track with an extensive social responsibility strategy for which Fundación Cineros helps to develop educational content. Working with the Fundación Barrick is improving and improving academic standards in primary and secondary schools. In fact, we already have a cooperation agreement between Fundación Cineros, Intel, and Barrick that operate in Argentina, Chile, and Peru. This program is intended to create positive change in the dynamics of teaming, learning, and teaching to the use of technology for teachers and students in rural area schools. We have reached an agreement to extend this agreement to Pueblo Viejo in the Dominican Republic. A large part of the social investment at Pueblo Viejo is aimed at increasing farmer productivity, improving health, nutrition, education, and adult literacy. Such social investment aim to increase personal income levels and improve the quality of life in communities near the barrack mine, in addition to supporting national development. In general, the Pueblo Viejo Dominican Corporation Investment would also help develop a project that would train over 150 women resident to rural areas in subjects such as business leadership and accounting. At the same time, the general group has undertaken a project on sustainable tourism at the highest level. Tropicalia, a $2 billion project which will process responsibility development in the eastern region of the Dominican Republic, includes a comprehensive corporate social responsibility strategy already underway under the management of my daughter, Adriana Cisneros. We have brought the educational program of Fundación Cisneros to this area, creating a school renovation program which improves school infrastructure and makes it more conductive to teaching and learning. We are proud to have renovated three schools in less than one year, favorably impacting the performance of nearly 1,500 students and 30 teachers. We also introduced the digital literacy course for teachers, which has been very successful in training teachers in the use of information <coughs> technology tools. This course is also essential for everyone to access the wide range of courses offered by the AMI program. The sustainability of the environment is, of course, together with education, one of our primary concerns. Hence, the Fundación Cineros and the specially created Tropicalia Foundation advanced the design and promotion of training workshops on organic agriculture to improve land use, sustainable agriculture, and agricultural biodiversity. In addition to our own educational programs, we're also implementing projects on the sustainability of the environment and also microfinance program promoting independent industries in the services, trade, and consumption sectors. All of these programs are der derived from our conviction about the fundamental tie that should link business activity with social responsibility. Of course, we feel proud of these accomplishments. But we're also aware of the scale of the staff and of the magnitude of the challenges I us. It is, however, a fundamental step in the right direction to identify 
where the root of the problem lies and to arguably set our priorities in the fight against poverty. In this sense, I believe education comes in first place. Before briefly summarizing what I have said, I would like to express my deep concern about the tragic events which recently hit Haiti, a country that deserves all of our support and which is the object of the sympathy and the other ourselves of most of the hemispheric and Floridian and international community. This effort should be further strengthened and we, and the Foundation Sinderos, have pledged all of our support with the decision to extend an educational program to Haiti as soon as it is feasible. Once the more urgent need for medical care, shelter, and food is met. As the international media has been reporting widely, there is an ongoing debate between those who argue that Haiti should be temporarily be taken over by international body, which would govern it and oversee its rebuilding, and those who argue that years of failed foreign imposed aid project prove the Haitians need to commandeer their own future this time around. In between, some argue for a joint Haitian international agency to administer a program for rebuilding and creating strong economic foundation. Whichever of these arrangements are chosen, everyone agrees that it will take a long period of sustained help and that aid alone will never build the foundation of a new and prosperous city. However, I believe that if the reconstruction is to succeed, the effort will have to be supported by a governing system that defends and upholds individual rights as well as the right to private property, both of which are common denominators of all modern prosperous nations and which should be absent in Haiti. Now, while these more abstract debates take place, many economists, journalists, businessmen, politicians, and academics have provided an abundance of specific, good, and practical ideas for improving Haiti's current of law. To give you one example, Carlos Morales Crosso, the ex Vice President, now Foreign Minister of the Dominican Republic, recently suggested to address Oppenheimer of the Miami Herald that the greatest problem in Haiti and one that no one is paying attention of the reason for its entrenched poverty is the degree to which the land has been divorced. Haitians have cut down nearly 99% of the country's streets, which are predominantly used for firewood or charcoal for cooking. As a result of not having forest, the country's soil has lost its ability to retain water drastically reducing the water supply and getting in the way of intensive agriculture. In addition, hurricanes and major storms have caused devastating floods that killed thousands after water flowed down the mountain on uninterrupted. Therefore, Minister Morales Concorso's proposal to have a massive plan to give natural gas stocks to the poor hand in hand with the scientific reforestation program to be implemented immediately. If there are any interest, I can address the Haiti issue further than the question and answer period. In conclusion, let me emphasize the following. The private sector in Latin America must commit itself fully to a well thought out corporate social responsibility strategies. It should be adequately designed and as far as possible implemented on the basis of dialogue and partnership with the public sector. It must be inspired by the vision of societies of free and responsible individuals. As I said earlier, to overcome the challenge of poverty requires economic growth and wealth creation. And to achieve those ends, we must take it our top priority to put in place improvements to our educational systems. In today's teaching world, knowledge has become the key driver of economic growth 
and talented labor is the most valuable asset a country can have. Investment in education is therefore a fundamental source of wealth creation and a primary device for defeating property. Thank you all once again. You're very kind. And I now leave you with Professor Rosella.